Hey, Jeremy here. So I'm sitting here in front of a 2012 Honda Odyssey. I just pulled the engine and now I've got to put a timer belt in it. I know what you're thinking, Jeremy, why did you pull the engine to put a timer belt in it? It's a very good question. So the reason I have this engine out is because actually this van is a parts van, a donor van, and this engine has to go in my wife's Honda Odyssey. Not real happy about it. Honda Odysseys are supposed to run forever. Around 60,000 miles, I started burning oil in one of the cylinders, and now I'm having to put a spark plug in that cylinder about once every three months. So I'm just buying the bullet. Let's go ahead and put an engine in it and just get that van to where it's more dependable. I was fortunate enough to pick up the van. It has 59,000 miles on it. For a van that's 10 years old, it's kind of rare to find one with that low of mileage. I debated on whether I should do anything to this engine before I put it in, and ultimately I've decided to put a timing belt in it. The reason I decided to do that is mileage-wise, I could probably get a little more time out of the timing belt, but the timing belt is made out of material that as it ages, it cracks, stretch, that sort of thing. It's gonna be a lot easier to do it right now, and if the belt's over 10 years old, probably need to go ahead and change it. So then I was thinking, should we buy aftermarket? Should we go OEM, called Honda, Looked at some online Honda places. Turns out that the kit was gonna be six, seven hundred dollars. So then I called some local auto parts places, priced that, a couple hundred bucks for an aftermarket one. So then I was fortunate enough to find an online seller who had an OEM kit. Tax and all was around $240. So I was like, you know, that that's that's very fair. I was concerned it was old stock, so I sent a message ahead of time just to confirm production, and they assured me that it was uh, current production and not some old stock that that's the same age as what I'm getting ready to replace. So, went ahead and ordered it, and here we are. So, now we're gonna go ahead and stick a timer belt in this, and we'll uh, show you what we did. But first, let's, uh, let's open the box and just see what all is in, in the kit. Okay, so now we got the box open, let's take a look. Got a nice Honda box, that's a good sign few little holes in it we'll check that out all right the first thing we got here is this kit also came with a new serpentine belt that was kind of nice i'm sure mine needs to be replaced here's their new timing belt it also came with a crank and two camshaft seals so that's these guys all right here is our new water pump that was what was sticking through the side of the box uh, Look to be in good shape. Seal still intact. I think we're good there. Let's see what else we got in here. Okay. Here's one of our pulleys. And here's probably another pulley. Yep. And then here is our belt tensioner. So if uh, if when you first start your Odyssey up and it's got that little rattle sound, maybe it goes away when it gets warm. This tensioner right here is uh what the issue is so anyway looks like uh look like everything's here so uh we are ready to go okay so here we are at the front of the engine uh this will be sitting sideways inside the passenger front wheel of your van when the motor is actually in the van so what we have here here's your power steering pump this is your upper uh, motor mount your camshafts or behind these timing covers here. Uh, this would be your right rear, and this would be your left or front timing cover and, and uh, camshaft. Lower timing cover here. Uh, here's your timing uh, belt tensioner, harmonic balancer. This is your main drive belt tensioner. So this is for your serpentine belt would go around this. AC compressor and a few other things once installed in the vehicle. So uh, there's a, a quick uh, quick walk around the front of the engine here. First thing we've got to do is we've got to rotate the harmonic balancer until a timing mark lines up with this arrow here. I went ahead and marked the harmonic balancer with a blue line so we can see that a little better. But we just got to rotate it until that lines up. All right, here it comes around. OK. 
Okay, right about there. Now we got to make sure that the number one cylinder is at top dead center. So if that is the case, we should see a timing mark. Let me get my flashlight here. Uh, I do not see a timing mark. So we've got to rotate another revolution here. Coming up here. Okay, that is pretty close. And our timing mark is right there. So we're good to go. So next, if this motor was in the van, the next thing you would want to do is remove the right front wheel, remove the inner splash shield that covers the wheel, we're going to remove the belt tensioner and then you would want to support the engine by putting something under the oil pan use a floor jack and a wood piece of wood or something like that and then you want to remove the ground strap that attaches to the motor mount that would sit here and then remove the motor mount bracket next remove this the harmonic balancer and so i'll go ahead and remove the drive, main drive belt tensioner and the harmonic balancer now. So the belt tensioner used a 14 millimeter and the smaller bolt here uh, was a 12 millimeter. And then the harmonic balancer will be using a 19 millimeter. Okay, so getting the harmonic balancer off does require a specialty tool. This tool, uh, you, you can buy it online fairly cheap or you can get it from mo most local um, auto zones or local uh, auto parts stores as like a loan or tool. But basically what this does is it goes in here and holds the harmonic balancer. So then you can fit your 19 millimeter inside here and you can use another ratchet or a breaker bar but i will, will warn you that is on there very very tight and most half inch impacts will not bring it off uh, we tried a couple breaker bars uh it was it was getting pretty difficult i was afraid i was about to break something so we just brought out uh, the big three quarter inch impact and it uh, it zipped it right off so <clears throat> Now, when you uh, take this out, you want to make sure that your timing marks have not moved. So we'll verify that. And everything looks good. And we'll go ahead and work on getting the harmonic balancer off. So next, we're going to remove the front timing belt cover and the rear timing belt cover. There's five bolts in each. It takes a 10 millimeter socket. And be careful there is a gasket there a little seal make sure not to damage that get this little harness out of here now here is our timing belt with all the covers removed, we'll start taking the pulleys off and the belt off. But before we do that, we want to double check our timing one more time. So you can see the timing mark here, up and down. Same thing on this one. 
And then the keyway, get over a little, should line up right there. So we're all looking good. So now we'll start taking the belt off. Next, we'll go ahead and move this lower motor mount bracket. One thing to note is this bolt did have thread locker. So we'll need to make sure and put that back on. And it looks like we've got a little 10 millimeter bolt right here that we'll have to get out. So the next step <clears throat> is to take, this is actually one of the battery hold down brackets and you thread it into this little threaded hole here and it holds the tension on the timing belt so that when we remove the timing belt tensioner this pulley just won't flop down and potentially move our timing components you want to be able to move this by hand you don't want to use any tools on it so we'll go ahead and Get our timing belt tensioner off, and it's removed two bolts right here. Now we'll go ahead and get the timing belt tensioner off. Okay, so it did move anyway. Okay, so now we have tension off the timing belt. All right, now we're gonna get the pulleys off and the timing belt. Thread locker on that one. Not on that one. Now we'll remove this. And then we can get our timing belt off. You can definitely tell this is a low mileage engine. It is clean, clean, clean. We'll look at this belt here. There's absolutely no cracking. Really hardly even any signs of wear. But we're gonna go ahead and replace it. All right, so now onto the water pump. Hopefully this won't make a huge mess. Well, I was wrong. Let me get a drip pan and control this mess. We've got our mess cleaned up here, at least somewhat contained. Now we're gonna go back with the water pump. You wanna make sure that the seal is down in the grooves. And then we'll go ahead and put it on. And the bolts are tightened to nine foot pound of torque. Okay, we had everything cleaned. We cleaned the gasket surface for the water pump and uh, we got the water pump on, torqued down. I did have to clean a little bit of the top of the gasket surface on the, on the block 
uh, with a little plastic scraper, there was a little bit of corrosion and dirt build up. But other than that, it was pretty clean. So uh, now we're going to put our idler pulleys on for a timing belt. This one goes in a forward position. This one does take Loctite, uh, 33 foot pounds of torque. This back one here, 19 foot pound uh, feet, feet of torque, and it does not take Loctite. Honda does recommend replacing this bolt. So just a FYI on that. So we'll go ahead and get this installed. We've got our two pulleys torqued down. So now one other thing I forgot to mention the kit did come with cam and crank sensor, or excuse me, uh, cam and crank seals. I elected not to change those. And before I did this job, I talked to some uh, mechanic buddies of mine. And basically they said if it's dry, they would not recommend changing them. You run into some issues with having to hold the motor, getting the seals changed, potentially getting it out of time, bending valves, all that stuff. So this is a low mileage engine. There's no indication that this is leaking as dry as it can be so i decided not to sell or excuse me not to change those uh those seals uh i'll actually probably throw those back up online and and then sell those so uh to somebody that needs them more than i do so all right so next we're gonna install our belt tensioner this is nine uh, foot pounds of torque you do not want to pull the pin yet so um also, we're going to thread this back in and get it uh, get it snug, and then we'll put our belt on. Now, Honda recommends putting the belt around the crank pulley first, this idler pulley second, um, the front cam, water pump, back cam, and then the belt tensioner last. So start again, crank, front idler, front cam, water pump, back cam, and then tensioner. And we'll get that on here in just a second. So now we're going to put our time belt on in the order that Honda recommended. As you put it around through there, you want to make sure snug. You don't want any any slack in this section. like that she's on so we're good and snug good and snug here barely got it up on here so you could definitely tell the original time of belt had to stretch some all the grooves look good time marks still lined up so yeah we're looking good one thing I wanted to point out, this is on the timing belt tensioner. The upper one is a new one, fully collapsed, have not pulled the pin yet. The lower one is the old one, it's fully extended. And you can see the only difference is maybe a little over a quarter of an inch. So if a timing belt were to stretch, any sort of wear in the system, that tensioner just really just doesn't move that much. 
So uh, just kind of a reminder to make sure you get your time belt changed like you're supposed to. That way you don't bend a valve or have a catastrophic engine failure. Now we've got the timing belt on and it's ready to go. Next, we're gonna pull the pin and we wanna make sure that this threaded rod is nice and tight. So now that the timing belt is on, I ran into one slight problem. The original pivot bracket here for the auto or for the tensioner was a much tighter fit than the new one. You could wiggle this gear quite a bit with the new one. So I decided I would use the original bracket and pivot bracket, but I would put a new pulley on it. So I took it back off, did that. Now I've got the old bracket here with a new pulley and we should be good to go. Now the next step is to go ahead and pull the pin, which will release the tensioner. I think I figured out the purpose of this threaded rod. And I think it's so that when this is released, the pin is pulled that um, the tensioner won't slam into the belt. You can ease, ease the tension on, um, or the tension off by threading this bolt out. So we'll, uh, we'll go with that for now. And uh, let's go ahead and pull the pin. Now we'll thread this off and you can see the tensioner going up and I'll have to probably get a pair of pliers to loosen it. There's quite a bit of tension on that now. Here we go. Now we can take it out by hand. We'll go ahead and finish taking this out. And then next, after this is taken out, we will put the bracket, the motor mount bracket back on. Honda does recommend changing the three bolts that bolted on. Uh, these torqued to 33 foot pounds with thread locker going on the lower one. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Okay, so now that we have the motor mount bracket on, next is to put this little ring on the crankshaft. It's curved out a little bit, so uh, the curved part faces away from the engine, so be sure and don't forget that. And then next is the lower timing cover. Make sure your seal is in there, aligned good. I kind of dusted it off, made sure it was clean. And then we'll put it on the bolts that attach it nine foot pounds of torque. We'll go ahead and finish getting the bolts in and getting those snugged up and then move on. Okay, so now that we have the lower timing cover on, we're gonna put the upper timing covers on. The bolts, they torque down to the same nine foot pounds as the lower bolts. And we're getting close to being done. Now we're going to put the harmonic balancer back on. A couple things you want to make sure everything's nice and clean where the bolt will go. And then also we want to make sure the bolt is nice and clean. The manual um, says to lubric, put some new engine oil on the threads as well as in between the washer and the bolt before installation. Then you will tighten the bolt to 48 foot-pounds 
and then you will rotate it another 60 degrees after that. And the way to tell what 60 degrees is, is just the difference between the two peaks on the bolt head. So what I'll probably do is I'll tighten it to 48 foot pounds and then I'll make a mark on the bolt where this high point is. And then I'll make a mark on the block where this high point is and I'll rotate the bolt until that uh, first mark on the bolt lines up with the mark on the block. And that'll probably be the plan there. So let's go ahead and get the harmonic balancer on. So here you can see the two marks I made. One is on the ridge of the bolt. The other one is on the harmonic balancer at the second ridge. And so we'll turn the harmonic balancer bolt until it lines up with that second mark. And that'll be 60 degrees. I've already torqued the bolt to 48 foot pounds. Okay, so we're almost done. Now we wanna take and rotate the crankshaft six revolutions and then we want to stop when the timing mark lines up here with the timing mark. And then we want to verify that our camshafts or timing is also lined up. So basically, we're just going to check and make sure everything's good to go so we don't bend the valve when we start it up. Here. All right, there's six. Yep, kind of marks are still lined up. Perfect. Looking good. Okay, here's what it looks like. This is the finished job. The only other additional thing I did was put the belt tensioner on. 33 foot pounds on this bolt, 16 foot pounds on the smaller bolt. And uh, that's the last piece of the puzzle, at least for what I'm doing here uh, today. So um, an experienced mechanic can probably do this timing belt in the vehicle in around four hours. A uh, shade tree mechanic, uh, do it yourself or it's gonna take you longer than that but uh, a lot of that is determined by how quickly you can get the harmonic balancer off and uh, just what tools you have available. So uh, hopefully this was helpful and uh, if you like what you see, subscribe, thumbs up and uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.